Hey everybody, this is Felicia with The Book Is Done. I am talking about book number four that I have read for this month. When I tell you this book that I'm about to show you is probably, if not the best book that I have read all year, it's either one or two. I, I couldn't even think of a book. If I think of a book that was I've read so many good books this year. Um, I want to say this one takes the cake. Like, blew everything else out of the water. The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Y'all, when I tell you, when I tell you, I'm pretty sure... This is the first book that I've had in a long time where I had what I call a book hangover. When I tell you I was in such, I was in such days, y'all. I was just like, what the crap did I just read? Greatness. I was literally like that for days, y'all, for days. When I finished that book, it took me, like I legit sat for like maybe five, ten minutes in silence. Normally, I would go live on Instagram and just be like, y'all, y'all have to read this book. When I tell y'all, I was so done. I finished this book maybe two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and I'm just now able to talk about this book. Like, it took me about three, four days before I could even start a new book. Because, baby, when I tell you this book right here, instant fan. Instant, 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 instant fan. Like, y'all, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, get the books. When I tell you I'm an instant fan, I'm pretty I'm just going to talk about it. So, if you have not read The Only One Left, get this book. I don't think I've talked about any other book like this except for Frida's books like earlier this year um, when I started reading her with Never Lie and, oh my gosh, Brain Damage and Do You Remember and The Perfect Son and The Inmate. Like, he is up there with Frida. He, my favorite author, author's of all time, James Patterson, Danielle Steele, Mary Higgins Clark. Like, Mary Higgins Clark got me into, like, mystery-type books. You know what I mean? Now, mind you, this was, like, 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, when I really started to read books and, like, good books at that. So, like, Mary Higgins Clark, Danielle Steele, they had that murder mystery, but it wasn't all gory. It was more of a mystery, um, which just kind of brought on my love and James Patterson just kind of had that to evolve now I'm on Dean Koontz and uh, Stephen King this right here is up there with him I, I lie to you now if you are not a Riley Sager fan or if you've never heard of him I understand I never heard of him before this book but when I tell you baby for some reason I wanted this book real real bad I didn't even know what it was about I was just like I have to read this book one of the best decisions that I've made. Um, okay, so it starts out where this book starts out as to where this family was murdered in 1929. It was a dad, it was a mom, and it was a sister, the Hope family. They were murdered in their house. Um, and the only one left was the youngest daughter, Lenora. Um, she was 17 years old. And when the police got there, she was the only one that was left, like, covered in blood. She just in shock. But mind you, this is 1929. So all of these, throughout the years, all of these different, um, you know, stories and fables and bad stuff was like, oh, she killed her family because she's still living in the house. She's still alive, still living in the house. And they were just like, how could she stay in the house that she murdered her family in? And it just doesn't make sense. She's a killer. She never went to jail. They could never put it on her that she killed her family. So she has been 
for lack of a better term, shunned to her house. Not, you know, by force, but she didn't want to go. She did not want to leave that house, and she never did. She never left her house. And so fast forward to 1983. 1983, there's this girl named Kit. Kit um, is a caregiver. Um, I don't want to say with this agency, but with this company where they provide caregivers to um, those who need them, not just elderly people, but those who need a caregiver. And so um, it starts off in telling her story as to where she's kind of shunned from the community because people were calling her a murderer because they believed that her mom, they killed her mom. Police were trying to say that she did it and all this kind of stuff. And she was caring for her mom, but I forgot what was going on with her mom. I want to say she either had um, Alzheimer's or I forgot what it was. When I tell you this book was so thick, it was so much to follow. So please forgive me. Um, but her mom was sick and her mom had died, I believe, like six months prior to us like starting to read about her. And so she was like, I did not kill my mom. And so the agency or the company that she was a part of, they had put her on um, unpaid suspension um, until the uh, to everything, the process could be completed through the police. And so they, you know, was just like, you know, we can't um, charge you with anything. And so we're going to let you go. So she goes back to her job and is like, you know, I don't want to come back to this job, but at the same point in time, nobody else is going to hire me. And so, um, the manager, Shady Boots dude, um, but the manager was like, I only have one job for you because technically you should be in jail. Like you should be fired because you killed a patient. But the only one that we have is Lenora Hope, who is the woman from the last Hope, um, family member who survived the murders years ago. And she was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't have anybody else that can be a caregiver to this woman. He's like, unfortunately not. Either you're going to take the job or you could just sit at this. You can't consider this as your resignation from this company. Basically, Valen told, he Valen told her that she was going to take this, um, that she was going to take this position if she was going to be out of a job. She was like, well, you know what? I haven't worked in six months. Let's just get it over with so I can start building my money. So she goes, she, she goes to this house super massive mansion and um it gives me like the secret garden vibes so you walk into you approach this big 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 mansion you got people on the grounds you got the uh, groundsman um who's taking care of everything that's who she meets first i forgot his name so many people involved but she meets him she goes inside the house to meet somebody by the name of miss baker miss baker is the one that runs the joint um she's been there from jump street when i say from jump street she was there when the family was still alive back in 1929. And so Ms. Baker has been there. And so um, it's only two people who's been, who's still in the house, who's been there from the beginning. It was Ms. Baker and it was the chef, the individual who was in the kitchen. And I forgot his name too, but they both knew what all was going on. And so, um, or what people say happened. And so, um, when I say secret garden vibes, like Miss Baker has Kit to put on like this whole outfit, like a maid outfit, and she is her only responsibility was to care for Lenore. Nothing else. Make sure she was bathed, that she ate, she changed, she did her exercises, she took her medicine like a true caregiver. So, Kit is all nervous and being in the house and whatnot because. She doesn't know if she did it or not. She doesn't know if she's caring for a murderer. And she's trying not to let her feelings get the best of her. But then she starts to communicate with Lenora. Now, mind you, Lenora, not to say she's mute, but an accident happened as to where her vocal cords were severely damaged. And she is paralyzed. I believe it's all on her right side. But she communicates by tapping. And she found out that she um, can type with her left hand. And so, um, Kit found out that she, not to say she replaced, but she did replace the former caregiver, Mary, who just all of a sudden disappeared. And it didn't make sense to people because Mary was just like the go-to. Mary, Lenora loved Mary, and all of a sudden, Mary just vanished. Like, people didn't understand what was going on. Her stuff was still there. 
um, it, it just literally looked like she vanished. So people on the outside looking in was like, man, she got murdered. And Lenora did it. Lenora is wheelchair bound. Like, and she's paralyzed. Like, she can't do anything. She can't lift herself out of her chair. She she can only operate her hand. And that's it. Um, and her eyes, of course. But everything else, she has to depend on a person. And so, excuse me. Excuse me. Here it goes. And so, um, the story goes on. She gets more of the history as to what all was going on. Lenora said um, she wanted to talk via typewriter. And Lenora said that she wanted to tell Kit the story. And so Kit was like, mm, I don't know if I feel comfortable. I don't know if I want to know. Long story short, she finds out. Lenora types everything. She tells her the story. So it's like you're basically going through the process of, or just the history excuse me, of Lenore. Lenore growing up, what was it like with her family, her growing up, and what actually led up to that point of the families being murdered and what's happened since then. And so, um, Kit finds out the whole story. She gets all the tea, y'all. She gets all the tea. And it was definitely not what she thought. And so, um, with this, you know, it's definitely a mystery book but um there are some paranormal aspects to it um just a little like um and not to downplay it because it is in there but there is um some action with a ouija board in there where they're trying to summon a spirit forth of any other family members um virginia is a sister um mr and mrs hope um and so um I forgot the family's name. I believe Franklin was the dad's name. Franklin, the dad was a hoe. He was sleeping with all, excuse me, but he was a hoe. He was sleeping with all of the housemaids in the house. Mama, not to say she was a pill popper as they described her in the book. She took a lot of medication, so she was very um, sedated throughout much of the book. Um, she was just always kept in her room and oh, she, she just mindset why she wasn't there. The daughter, Virginia, Virginia was Virginia was wild. She was out there. She wanted to be noticed and she wanted to be liked by these men and all this kind of stuff. Excuse me. So, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. So, in all things, this book right here, when I tell you, you have to pay attention. Not to say you're going to miss something because there were a couple of parts where I had to go back and be like, did such and such say this? And did such and such do this? Like, <gasps> Who is this person again? And I had to go back and flip through the pages because it's mentioned throughout the book and you just have to pick up on different things throughout the book. Um, this man, listen, when some people say that it legit take their breath, it took their breath away, took the breath away. Like I, this book went everywhere with me, everywhere with me to work, uh, in the car, in the living room, in the kitchen, if I couldn't um, read in my room. This book went everywhere with me. This is the most recent book that he has um, just found out last week, literally, that he is releasing a book called Middle of the Night that's coming out in, Ju in June of next year. When I tell you, somebody put on here, Riley Sager equals auto buy. They are automatically buying his book off rip. I'm the same way. This only one left best book go get it go read it if you have not already go get the book um the only one left by riley sager just five out of five ten out of five get the book best thing you'll buy all year um and it's everywhere amazon of course um your local retailers um walmart uh, Target, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, literally every major retailer, you can find this book. This book is everywhere. Um, get the book. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you thought about it. Um, how you feel? Um, because in me becoming a Riley Sager fan, I'm learning different things, but um, it's definitely a book for you to check out. So. This is Felicia with The Book Is Done, and I'm out. Good night.